My name is Exonovan, and this is my RTC Rewind for Neo 2. And it's been a while since I covered this game. It's currently uh, the end of June, basically rolling into July at this point. And uh, I think I covered this game seven or eight months ago. It was last year. It's been a while since I've uh, looked at the trophy list and thought about this game. <laughs> to be honest with you, when I was done with this game, I really just wanted to block it out of my mind for a very long time because it was a very tricky guide to put together. So I wanted to give it some time to breathe, wanted to focus on some other projects. Uh, but I promised you guys that I was going to start doing these RTC rewinds after all of my RTC guides. So I wanted to hop in here go through the guide, give you my review of the game and also the trophy list, plus talk a little bit about why I, you know, set up the trophies the way that I did. Uh, I think this guide took about three or four months to put together, if I remember correctly. My patrons can, can tell me. They were keeping track of it, I know. Uh, but I think it took about three or four months to put together. And to date, this game took the most practice out of any other guy that I've ever put together. I actually got the platinum in this game. I think it was eight times <laughs> in order to get the run down solid to the point where I knew I could post it online. So there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, so let's get started. So we're going to go to the first trophy. By the way, what you're seeing right now, guys, is my notes. Uh, if you're a patron supporter or if you're supporting me through YouTube memberships, uh, this is something that you guys get for all the games that I cover. It's a great way to look up trophies, look up collectibles, things of that nature. Uh, think of it like a wiki, but without all the text. It's just pictures and it covers navigation as well. I know a lot of times when you go and you read through wikis, they'll have like a paragraph of things you have to read and then they'll give you like two screenshots. And even after reading all that stuff and looking at the screenshots, you still have no clue <laughs> what the wiki is telling you to do. Uh, this RTC visual guide allows me to look back through the entire game step by step. And like I said, it even includes navigation. So uh, if you ever support me on uh, through YouTube memberships or Patreon, this is something that you guys will get access to. And it's a really neat resource to be able to uh, do your trophy hunts with. So the first trophy was Bold Wrangler defeated Kazuki in the village of Cursed Blossom. This was a no-brainer. Obviously, uh, the village of Cursed Blossoms, that is the very first uh, mission of the game. Now, I did have the option to skip this fight because you can replay missions. And I thought about that. I said, well, maybe we just skip this fight and we come back later when we're super OP and we just nuke this fool, right? Uh, and that's, you know, that's a possibility when you're looking at gods like this. But I felt like... If you were new to this franchise, like I was, because uh, when the game, when uh, Neo 1 dropped, I just played the demo. I think I made it to the first boss, but I didn't even defeat the first boss. I just spent a lot of time looting the area and looking around and stuff like that, getting used to the game mechanics, and then obviously seeing how close this game was to a game like Dark Souls. Um, so when I hit up Neo 2, I had no prior experience with Neo 1, and I said, some players are going to feel that same um th they're gonna have that same experience because they didn't play neo one so i think it's probably better if we keep this trophy as the first trophy and then um allow players to get a little bit of confidence with the game i said but i'm only going to do it if i can find out a cheese method to be able to take this boss down because the first thing i noticed about this game was that it was extremely difficult uh versus a game like dark souls I felt like getting overpowered early was a little bit um, more cumbersome than a game like Dark Souls. Uh, and it took me a long time to figure out which build that I felt like would, would hold up throughout the entire guide and things of that nature. So I said, you know, let me put myself in the mind of a player who's playing this game for the first time and watching my guides. And what would they want? They would want confidence with a game like this. They want to be able to take down that first boss get some confidence and then ride that wave throughout the uh, the series. So I decided to keep this in uh, the guide. And if you've watched the guide, you know that we figured out a way to cheese the boss using the uh, like the archway, if you will, before it was like the gate, basically, before you come into this fight. And uh, we were able to cheese the boss pretty easy there. So I decided to keep that in. There's another trophy uh, we'll probably get to well i know we'll get to it later uh where you have to defeat this enemy and 
It's actually the boss of this level. I think it's called Mizuki, I think. Within the same mission, right? And I knew we could go ahead and pick that trophy up now as well, which is a reason why I wanted to keep the Bold Wrangler trophy here. Although there is a mission later on in the guide, which we used a lot to farm for T utensils and experience where you actually can fight Gozuki and Mizuki within the same mission. And it's a very, it's not a mission like, like the village of curse blossoms where there's a, uh, intricate level design and stuff like that. The, the, the later mission is just, uh, I think it's four waves of enemies and the fourth wave, uh, is those two enemies. And then of course, if you kill them both there, you can pick up that trophy too. But I just figured why not go ahead and knock it out now, get those trophies under our belt and give some players some confidence. But if I couldn't, uh, if, if I didn't find a cheese method for this fight, I would have skipped it because I didn't want a lot of players dying. That's something I think about when I make guides is yes, there's going to be times where we die, especially in games like dark souls and stuff, but I don't want you to die early unless it's on purpose. Cause sometimes we die on purpose strategically, but I don't want you to get um, annoyed with the very first fight of the game, especially in a case like this where it can be skipped. Uh, so I really had to give that one some thought, but I decided to keep it as trophy number one. Okay, trophy number two, slide 53, Trinket Triumph. Use the Kodama Bazaar. This was going to be a given at some point. We were going to use the Kodama Bazaar anyway. I decided to slide it into uh, trophy number two because I wanted to build up our ninjutsu uh, experience points so we could unlock some things in the skill tree. And so that's the, the part of the run where I had you guys uh, basically keep quitting the game and going back to the bazaar until you got the bomb, because that gives you a lot of experience when you use the bomb. And I knew, God, it probably took about three or four days for me to just choose a build. But once I figured out that we were going to use that ninjutsu build, I knew I wanted to start us off with a bunch of XP and skills and stuff like that. And I knew this bomb would give us the most experience because I tested this and I think there was uh, the um, the kunai and stuff like that. And this one ended up giving me the most experience. So we did some uh, quitting out, reloading until we got the ninjutsu bombs or the I guess they're called gunpowder bombs. But I knew that would get us the trophy and we could go ahead and knock that out. So that's good. Remember, uh, with these trophies, I always try to make it to where our trophies are popping at the same time, which is another reason why I wanted to slide that trinket triumph as early as possible, because I knew some of you might even accidentally go into the Kodama Bazaar, maybe because you're just curious and then your trophy would pop, but it wouldn't have popped in the gameplay yet. And to some players, that's very confusing. So sometimes i will force trophies into the beginning of a guide even though i know we're going to get them at some point later um just because of that reason a prime example is a game like um like dark souls 2 for instance there's a trophy for dying for the first time right and i know at some point we're all going to die right? and we're all going to get the trophy but again i don't want that trophy to pop at different times so i strategically uh shoved that trophy very early into the run and so that we could all get it at the same time, right? And so this Trinket Triumph trophy was no different. Okay, trophy number three, there it is. Yeah, Mizuki, the Grazer Eraser trophy. Defeated Mizuki and Gozuki in the same mission. So there we go. So you don't get a trophy for killing this specific enemy, but if you kill Gozuki and Mizuki within the same mission, you get that trophy. Again, I wanted to go ahead and knock that out. I could have waited. But um, then we would have had to make a trip back to the village of Curse Blossoms later to kill uh, Gozuki. And then, of course, that's not optimal. So it just made sense for me to put that here. Plus, we got credit for killing that yokai as well. This is just going to happen right here. Uh, Dawn of a Dream befriended Tokichiro. That's an NPC you find very early on at the end of the first mission. So I wasn't worried about that trophy course score. Wasn't worried about that trophy either. Well, let me take that back because soul cores drop randomly, right? Uh, I knew that we would all get core score within the first mission because like I said, you automatically get um, this soul core at the end of 
uh, mission number one. So I wasn't too worried about that. I don't know. I'm trying to think if I'm trying to think if soul cores would drop. No, no, no. This would have been our first opportunity to get. Yeah. Our first soul core. I was thinking about the, um, what do they call them? Maybe they are soul cores. It's been a long time since I've played, you know, when you just kill a random enemy in the level and it drops and you pick it up. I can't remember if they're called soul cores as well. I think they are. Uh, but I knew that we would all have this trophy by now, even if you were to pick one of those up randomly in the uh, first mission. But I think I probably would have told you guys not to pick up any soul cores, or maybe you can't. Maybe you can't because it's tied to more of this tutorial right here where you get this soul core and then maybe the game unlocks them. I can't remember, but I knew we'd have it all here either way. So I wasn't too worried about that one. Again, it's been like eight months, I think, since I've played. So you guys will have to cut me some slack on how much of this I can actually remember. The beginning of a samurai reached level 10. I knew we had to farm experience to get our ninjutsu game up, right? Because I wanted to be over leveled a little bit at the beginning of the game. I like to do that with any type of RPG that I play. Even back in the day when I played games like, um, I remember when Final Fantasy Origins, Origins dropped, if you guys remember that release, I remember getting that game, coming home and playing. Um, I spent probably the first, I don't know, 30, 45 minutes of the game, just getting to level like 10 or 15. I forget how long it actually took. But my point is, is that typically with RPGs, I like to get to level 10 before I'm, before I like progress the story. That's just how I like to do it. Getting to level 10, in my opinion, it doesn't mean you're going to be OP for the rest of the game, but I like to get to level 10 because I know if I get to level 10, I'm going to be very familiar with the controls and the combat. So it's kind of a bar I set for myself with all RPGs. And I wanted to do the same here again, trying to build confidence with the player. And I know that if everybody gets to level 10, that you're comfortable with the controls, right? Because once we get past this point in the run, I'm not going to be spending a lot of time telling you how to play and stuff like that. And I'm also going to assume that you have the controls down. And so this trophy was strategically put here as kind of a benchmark to make sure that I knew where every player was. Does that make sense? So that's why I wanted to slide that into trophy number six. Trophy seven, spa healer bathed in the first hot spring. This was a no brainer. I think this is actually the very first hot spring you can rest at in the entire game. And so obviously with that being the case, I wanted to make sure that it was the first hot spring we rested at and we get the trophy there, obviously. Um, so that's not a big deal at all there. I think it was a little bit tricky to get to this one though. If I remember correctly, you had to go around the area and open up a, um, not a fake wall, but there's enemies that would block. Uh, and in fact, I think the enemy used to be here, these wall enemies that can actually attack you. So again, we, we kind of had to go out of our way to get this, but it's optimal because we didn't have to come back later to do it. Help wanted summon an acolyte from a benevolent grave 10 times. If I'm being honest with you guys, when I first started playing this game, I didn't know what the benevolent graves were. Uh, I think the very first mission, there is a benevolent grave. It's the blue graves, but then there's the red graves, which I wasn't playing online, but I still saw red graves in the game. And I guess they were more like developer grave sites. So I was actually confused about this one. Um, I had to actually look it up and figure out what the heck they were talking about. And then when I got here, I knew that we could, well, I didn't know at the time, uh, anytime there's a trophy for doing something 10 times or killing so many enemies, like getting 50 headshots, those type of trophies, I call those, uh, objective based trophies, uh, very similar to the games like uncharted where you have to get 50 enemies, uh, kill 50 enemies with a shotgun or kill 50 enemies with a sniper or whatever. Right. I always, uh, check to see if they can be farmed. Right. Uh, the main reason for that is because then I don't have to find 10, 10 acolytes across 10 different missions. Right. And a lot of times you have to go out of your way to get to these graves, which just bloats the run. 
right? It's easier, especially in this case, because there was a checkpoint around the corner. So all you had to do is run out here, you know, summon. And then I think we died to the flames in front of the temple, if I remember correctly. And then we just did it over again. A lot of times you guys will ask me, why do we farm stuff like that? And trust me, it just saves time down the line. It's just one less timestamp I have to worry about. Or I guess in this case, it would have been nine extra timestamps. And then, like I said, we never know where these uh, graves might be within a mission. How, how far do we have to go out of our way to get to a grave? Does that make sense? How many enemies do we have to kill to get to each one of the graves? And when you have a trophy like this where you have to do something 10 times, I mean, it can really blow to run depending on the description of the trophy, right? Uh, again, a prime example is Uncharted 1. I think there's a trophy for getting... Uh, 250 headshots i think or maybe that's uncharted 3 but one of those games you have to get a really high number of headshots and i know in uncharted 1 you can actually get all three of the headshot trophies in the very first level which yeah it sucks you got to farm for 20 or 30 minutes to get those headshots but then they're done imagine having to play through that entire game worrying about headshots with every single kill, right? That would just slow down the run, especially if you're looking at, you know, 250 headshots or whatever that high number was. It would just be ridiculous. So anytime I can farm trophies like that, I'll, I'll, I'll always do it because it just saves time in the long run. And it makes my life easier when it comes to editing and time stamping and stuff like that. So I knew we could get that trophy here. Well, I didn't know at the time I tested it, obviously figured that out and I was like well cool if it works for stuff like this then I can probably get some other other trophies out this way as well so that was a good one to stick here I think there, I think there was one acolyte or I guess benevolent grave in the first mission and I think we actually got that one as well and maybe there's even another one between the first mission in here and we picked those up because they were on the way and they counted but i knew we could wrap up that trophy here plus another thing oh yeah another thing with trophies like this is i never know how many times you're gonna die okay so if i have 10 of these routed for the entire run but in between the third and the fourth benevolent grave you die 10 times but yet you have to keep following the guy which means you have to keep summoning right one of those benevolent graves your trophy is going to pop way before mine does in the guide so this would ensure that everybody's trophy pops at the same time as well all right trophy number nine latest masterpiece forge an item i knew we were going to have to forge in this game so i think in episode three this is slide 230 i'm pretty sure this was the first time we get access to the blacksmith and I knew I wanted to go on over there and forge an item just to get that trophy out of the way. Again, some of you play a little bit more curious than you probably should follow in my guides because my guides are very specific. And I said, if somebody goes over there and just is playing around with the menus and stuff, they're gonna accidentally forge an item and they're gonna get the trophy and then they're gonna be scratching their head thinking that they might've messed up the guide or something like that. So wanted to get that as early as possible you'll see me do that in a lot of my guides by the way again just trying to get the trophies as early as you possibly can just so there's no confusion even if it doesn't quite make sense in the grand scheme of things it makes sense for the guides that i try to produce because my guides are more like um you know uh, leaving you breadcrumbs if you will and you have to pick up every single crumb Right, and we're all doing it step by step. So it's a little bit different than other walkthroughs you might see, or I guess trophy guides. Sudama Swapper, I think that's how you say that. Uh, exchanged gifts with the Sudama for the first time. I knew that we would hit this mission fairly early on in the run. Um, I think this is actually the first time you get a chance to interact with the Sudama. So just like I said before, I wanted to make sure we got that trophy early. And I think at this point, we had a lot of extra soul cores. Yeah, I, cause I think by this moment we had farmed in a previous mission. Yeah, and we kept, uh, yeah, that's right. We kept killing a boss. I forget which mission it was, but we kept killing a boss and that boss always dropped soul cores. 
And I think there was a soul core we wanted there, or at least the benefits for that soul core that we wanted specifically for the run. But I knew we would have like seven or eight extra soul cores. And so by the time we got here, I knew we could drop that soul core and still be in step with the God. Uh, there's a trophy for getting all the soul cores. I think there's uh 36, I think we'll, we'll get there later on in this, in this RTC rewind. But I think there's like 36, if I remember correctly, something like that. No, actually, I think there might even be more than that. Uh, and I, I think the trophy actually pops, even if you don't have all the soul cores in your inventory at one time meaning if you pick one up you've gotten credit for it now you can actually get rid of it but i knew that that would confuse players so i wanted to make sure that we kept one of each of our soul cores so that when it, it came time to pop the trophy you could actually go through a list and compare you know in case you didn't get your trophy you could uh review your list compare it with mine and then figure out which one you were missing so I strategically had us drop a specific soul core here uh, just because I knew we'd have extra. All right. Friend to the Kodama. Obtain a Kodama's soul core. Pray at a shrine or complete mission. Yeah, that was something I wanted you guys to get in the habit of. Uh, not just picking up soul cores, but making sure that you actually completed the mission or rested at the shrine. Because if you didn't do that, you actually didn't get credit for the core. And I wanted to establish that rule very early. And luckily there was a trophy for it. Otherwise I would have just uh, did it with my commentary and established that rule. And I think I even reinforced it uh, in the commentary for this trophy because later on we have to get that mimic soul core. And I think there was another soul core that was rare. And I know that it'd be very easy to pick up the mimic soul core. And then, you know, maybe you're trying to complete the mission, you die. And you think you've got the Mimic Soul Core. You remember picking it up, but then when it comes time to get the trophy, you don't get the trophy. And it's because you didn't rest at the shrine or complete the mission. So I wanted to establish that rule early. So that's why that was trophy number 11. Okay, slide 407, an electrifying triumph. I remember this is a, uh, yeah, we just had to defeat one of the bosses. So no big deal there. And I think that boss was fairly easy since by this stage in the game, I feel like we were pretty over over leveled. In fact, we're pretty over leveled for probably 90% of this campaign. I think there's some of the bosses near the end that were still tough, even though we were over leveled, but uh, it just takes a little bit of perseverance and you get through that stuff. No problem. Uh, okay. Decided to share. What is that? Decided to share a name with Tokachiro. Decided to share a name with Tokachiro. That's a weird description for that trophy. I don't remember the context of that, but I know it was, it was for getting through the first region. So that was going to happen regardless of our path. Oh, I remember this one. Feather Buster drove back every whatever that name is along the journey in a way out. So that is a... Uh, a trophy that's tied to a specific mission called a way out. Um, once I got to that part in the mission for the first time, I knew exactly how to get this trophy. But when I read that trophy at the very beginning of my planning stages, I was like, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> you know, I don't know what they mean by that. I don't know what that, that enemy is or what that element of the gameplay is. Uh, but once I got here, I knew exactly how to get through here and it just took a little bit of time to route it. We were good to go. All right, oops, I lost my place there, guys. Let me get back to where I was. I, I think I was on trophy 15. That's the beauty of this RTC visual guy. I mean, you can just find anything super quick. There we go, let the picture load in. Okay, lover of letters, displayed a calligraphy scroll in your hut. I think the trickiest part here was figuring out how to get one of the calligraphy scroll, scrolls. And if I remember correctly, I think we got one from the tea merchant, I think I might be wrong on that, but I think it was from the tea merchant and you had to have, um, like a thousand, what was it? The game caught, it was like a certain type of currency, but it, it was for killing, um, red graves. 
So I think we farmed that in one of the missions. We just kept, I think there was three or four red graves in one mission. So we just kept killing those enemies. And like I said, getting whatever type of currency that was. And then I think we were able to buy this from the tea merchant, I believe, but fairly simple trophy. Once I figured out how to get it devout believer defeated the boss of the Viper sanctum without breaking the statue of Shirohami. I think it's how you say that. So I remember this, this was a very tricky uh, trophy for me to figure out exactly where to slide it into the guide. I think we actually come back and do this. I think the first time we come to this mission, we actually got rid of the poison pools. Basically there's three statues. They're like snake statues basically. And if each one of them you destroy, you get rid of one of these poison pools. You can see two there. And I think there's another one in the back. Um, and it just makes the fight easier because you don't have to deal with the poison. Plus, I think once you go into these poison pools, you move slower, if I remember correctly. So it's a nightmare for this fight. So I think the first time we get here, we got rid of them, I think. And then we just nuked the boss. So I think by this stage of the run, this is slide 682. I think we're super, super over leveled at this point. So we come back to this mission and, you know, with our increased health and stuff like that, our ninjutsu skills and stuff, we're able to go in here and just nuke the boss. And it doesn't matter if the poison pools are there or not, but I almost slid it further up into the run. But I, again, I don't want you guys dying when we can just come back and do it later. So I felt like we should slide it further back into, into the route. Okay. Teamwork complete 10 missions with NPCs or as expeditions with other users do not include or does not include acolytes. So I didn't want you guys to be forced to, um, uh, play online with other players. Cause that can be crazy if you don't have friends who play this game. Uh, and I really liked this mission to be able to knock this out. In fact, I think there's previous missions where we do some teamwork stuff with NPCs, but I knew we would have this trophy here. If you, if you guys follow my guy correctly, and I think you can even farm this mission because it's so short or you can farm any of the missions when it comes to NPCs, but this mission is extremely short. I think all you have to do is run up a hill, kill up uh, some enemies in this area, and then you're done. So I think mine naturally popped here, I think, but it seems like I remember telling you guys in the commentary that if you don't get the trophy now, just replay this mission until you get the trophy. So again, once I figured out that some of these trophies could be farmed, that's a game changer when it comes to routing the guy. Uh, okay. Now this boss, this boss initially was a wall for me in this guide. I had a really tough time, uh, getting past this boss. Now, once I figured out the ninjutsu build and how overpowered that was and stuff, and the fact that we could bring in a summon for this fight, uh, wasn't a big deal at all. Right. But it took me a long time to get there to kind of wrap my head around the builds for this game. Uh, now this particular trophy, it's called schemer. You have to get this enemy to ram into one of the, the gates inside of this boss arena and it kind of knocks him out for a second and pops a trophy. So that's what we're talking about there. But I think the next slide is going to be for killing him. No, there's not a trophy for killing this boss. It's just for getting that trophy. Hmm. Yeah, but I remember this trophy being a nightmare. I mean, this uh, boss being a nightmare for me. I thought there was a trophy tied to killing this boss, but I must be wrong about that. Okay, full-fledged samurai reached level 100. So again, this is something that's going to happen as you naturally progress through the game. I mean, you will get to level 100. Uh, but because there was a trophy for it, once I figured out a place we could farm it pretty, pretty easy, uh, so this is the mission here. Yeah. The refined man of the underworld. Uh, I figured, you know, since there's a trophy for it, let's go ahead and get over level. It just makes the most sense. It doesn't take a lot of time. Uh, and that way the rest of the game plays out pretty smooth. Um, again, this is one of those trophies that if you just play through the entire guide, you'll eventually get to level 100, but each fight, each mission as you're leveling up to level 100 is going to be a struggle. And it's about making things as easy as possible, right? I'm building a guide for Elden Ring right now. 
and I think we spend about the first hour, maybe the first hour and a half becoming over leveled, right? And it sucks for that first hour and a half because it feels like you're not really progressing through the game. Uh, very little trophies, stuff like that. But once you get past that first hour and a half, the trophies just start you know, coming in really quick because you're just fast traveling to a certain spot, killing a boss, getting a trophy, moving on. So it, it, it sucks getting through the first hour and a half or so, but then it just is streamlined after that. It's so easy or easier, I should say. And I, I knew that there was a trophy for this. So why not go ahead and over level, right? If there, if there wasn't a trophy for reaching level 100, I probably still would have done it. But this kind of forced me to put it as early as possible into the guide. So I was happy with that choice. That was trophy 19. Trophy 20, Hidden Hopes, encountered all of the, I have no idea how to say that, in the frenzied blaze. What is this? I don't know. Oh, I do know what this is. It's the butterflies. That's what it is. Yeah, there's some butterflies over here behind these flames. So I think there was uh, three. Maybe it was. I think there was three. Can't remember, but it wasn't like mm, I don't think there was any more than six. I'll put it like that, but I think there was three. And so you had to find them. You had to interact with them. And then, of course, you got the trophy. Not a big deal. Once I knew they were all inside the frenzy blaze because of the description of the trophy, then it was just a matter of routing them into the guide and no problem there. I think there was three. Uh, parted ways with Tokichiro. The paths we tread. That's a story. Storyline trophy. Wasn't worried about that one. Uh, I did want to make this fight easy, though. And it was, if I remember correctly, we just nuked it with uh, kunai <laughs> and gunpowder bombs. Okay, discovered 10 hidden items on the map. Again, this was one of those curiosity trophies where I knew some of you would want to be curious about the map and look around, especially if you play Neo 1. I'm assuming this was a game mechanic in Neo 1. Again, I don't know. But I said, if somebody's played Neo 1 and they're coming to this game and they've read the trophy list, then they're going to want to be curious and look for this trophy on their own. And then our trophy is going to pop at different times and that that can sometimes lead to confusion with the God. So each map, I searched it very, very. Um, uh, I was very thorough with my search to make sure that I got all the hidden points that I could find because I wanted to make sure that um, we could, you know, we could all get this trophy at the exact same time. All right, trophy number 23. Uh, oh yeah, the 10,000 bells trophy. So ring all the bells in ruin draws near. I'm really glad that the description of these trophies told us as players where we could find the bells. I mean, it doesn't tell you where the bells are located within this mission, but at least it tells you which mission the bells are in because otherwise you, you might think that uh, the bells could be in any of the missions, right? And that bloats your time doing research and all kinds of stuff. So once I knew that and this mission came up, I knew to kind of slow down and take my time and figure out where the bells were. So no big deal there. Dreams told defeated Tokichiro. That is a story related trophy. So no problem with that one. That one's going to happen. Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So clean sweep destroyed every, I think it's Amrita. I think it's how you say it uh shard in the high spirited demon so once again it told me which mission they were in then it was just a matter of going through uh being thorough and finding them all no no problem all right number 26 mother and child are reunited with your mother in the interim again once i saw the interim show up on the map i knew it was there no problem story related wasn't too worried about that one uh, ninjutsu master acquired mystic art for ninjutsu this kind of uh, had me stumped for a while because there were so many skill trees in this game uh it kind of reminded me of the sphere grid in final fantasy 10. uh i found it very confusing at first just like i found the sphere grid for final fantasy 10 the first time i played that back in the day very confusing but once you once you understand it and you get it it makes sense but um, I had to look this one up and, and figure out exactly what they meant by uh, the mystic art. Like, what does that mean? I didn't know. 
um, because all that stuff is locked, right? It doesn't say mystic art. I don't think it does. I don't think it says mystic art right away. I think it has to be unlocked first. But once I knew that, it wasn't a problem. All right, trophy number 28, Seven Wonders. Defeated each of the seven spears in Cherry Blossom, viewing in Daigo. Again, it told me which mission. Once I saw that mission come up, I need to kind of take my time and figure that part out. Uh, there was a lot of enemies in this area, though, but I think... I think the seven spears, well, obviously they all have spears, but there's a few enemies in this mission that the enemies have spears, but they don't count. Uh, I think it, I think, I'm trying to remember, I think the, I think the way that you knew was the enemies had spears and they had a funky looking helmet, right? I think that was the, how you knew that that was a specific enemy for that trophy again because there was some enemies in that level that had spears but they didn't count toward the trophy okay trophy number 29 what is written uh fulfilled your ultimate destiny uh what was this for i don't know how this trophy pop is that just a story related trophy oh yeah sealed fate i think that was a story related trophy i think yeah, I don't think that was a problem. I think that was story related. Uh, trophy 30. Match made in heaven. Performed a soul match. Now, this could actually be done earlier in the run, I think. Can't remember if this opens up after a specific mission. I can't remember. And I can't honestly remember why I put this trophy here. I think it's, I think it's because it opens up later on. In other words, when you go to the blacksmith, I don't think this option's available right away. I don't think. So that's probably why I put that one here. It's been so long. Fuse it or lose it. Fused any soul core until it reached rank nine. So this is one of those trophies I knew that I wanted to build up our soul cores. I did not want you guys to use your last soul core, right? Uh, for a specific enemy. So I wanted to make sure we had plenty so that when we did all this stuff, uh, you would still have one of each in your inventory. So I kind of saved out that, that trophy for later in the run. Spa lover bathed in every hot spring. Again, this was just about making sure that I checked every level got all the hot springs so that when we got to the last one, we didn't have to backtrack into a mission to, to unlock one, right? Or to rest at one. Same way with the Kodama leader trophy, collect all the Kodama. I wanted to make sure that I got all those as we went through the, the game. I didn't want to have to backtrack and get any. I do that with pretty much all the collectibles for games that I cover. Uh, remodeling novice remodeled a piece of equipment again I think I don't think the remodel thing opens up until later in the guide as well yeah because I remember seems like when you first visit the blacksmith see how we have some options here I think some of them are grayed out if I remember correctly so that's probably why I have that there it probably just opened up let there be light dispelled every instance of the dark realm in the main missions. Once again, I wanted to get those as we went through each mission. I didn't want to have to backtrack. It's more optimal that way. Uh, yokai Quelling Master defeated all types of yokai. And then you also get the Dream Within a Dream trophy. Saw Tokachiro off on his final departure. So this is basically the, the final fight, if you will. Uh, and again, with the yokai, I wanted to make sure that we got all those as we went through the mission so that we could pop the trophy here. But I think I had a fail safe built into the guide where I think it's either the next step in the guide or maybe it's another episode where if you didn't get the trophy, I gave you a list of all the yokai in the my pinned comment or the description, one or the other. And uh, you could cross-reference and figure out which one you missed and go back and, and pick them up. I think that's how I... I'm, if I didn't build it that way, I should have. Um, trophy 38. 
uh, a weapon's mind listening to the innermost thoughts of a yokai weapon so yokai weapons we actually got those or you could have got those earlier in the run i think um uh, what was the name of that mission i think it was like the second main mission of the game it's the one where the uh you fight the boss inside of that flaming temple it's actually possible to get your first yokai weapon there um but it's kind of random right because you're just killing random enemies and it might drop and then you can pick it up and i didn't want the trophy to i didn't want you guys to get access to a yokai weapon that early unless it was something i intended for you guys to get because i think some of the yokai weapons don't speak to you and some of them do but I knew that after defeating the final boss, you would get a yokai weapon that I knew would be able to speak to you. And I think it was called the, yeah, there it goes, the rotten rope cutter. So I knew for a fact we would all get that item at the final boss fight. Uh, and it was a guaranteed drop. Again, uh, if you've never played this game, every time you kill an enemy, they, well, not every time, but they have the ability to drop stuff, but it's all random. And even the chests you find in the environment are random. So that was a nightmare for me to have to worry about getting all of our um, armor set up and the weapons that we use because I had to make sure that it was a guaranteed drop for killing a boss or something like that. So knowing that we would all have access to the rotten rope cutter at the very end of the game, I decided to make that trophy stand out here. Uh, trophy 38 and then uh, trophy 39 T connoisseur appraised your tea utensils 50 times the refined man of the underworld is in my opinion one of the best missions to get to utensils and because we also had to get our uh um, sentience level up to five to get the other trophy it just made sense to pair those two trophies here uh to optimize uh, this farming spot right all right, trophy number 40. We're getting close to the end. Burst Breaker. Use the Brute, Feral, and Phantom Burst counters five times each to counter a burst attack. And this is something we could have got very early on, but I knew that burst countering was not going to be a part of our strategy for getting through fights because uh, it's kind of like rolling in a Dark Souls game. Believe it or not, guys, not everybody can do it. Just like if I were to sit down with you guys right now and I made a guide for Guitar Hero or something like that to get the Platinum, not everybody could follow it. Even if I was trying to teach you how to, you know, learn rhythm and all that kind of stuff, there's some people that no matter how hard they try can never learn how to play a rhythm-based game. It's just the way it is. And rolling in, in a Dark Souls game as easy as it looks, because we've all rolled in games before, if you try to roll through an attack and you get hit it's pretty damaging it punishes you for making that mistake and uh to a lot of players i know that can be a very jarring experience and if i can show you how to walk into a boss fight and just spam one button and win and stand in one spot then that's what i'm going to do um so when it came down to this trophy i did not want to make this a part of our strategy going through the entire game i just tabled it until now by this stage in the game you guys are very comfortable with the game right so just taking a few seconds and getting five burst counters with each one of our, um, I forget what the game called them. Uh, well, I know it was Brute, Feral, and Phantom, but I forget, I forget the, what are they called? I can't remember. But anyway, I knew it would be easier to get it done now uh, rather than at the beginning of the game. Um, again, I don't want to put trophies like this at the beginning of the game because I don't want you to be frustrated. Right. And yes, you might be frustrated now on slide 1979, you know, where we're in like episode 30 or something, but you're not going to quit the run, you know, because you, you've already invested so much time. So you're going to just push through. I put something like this at the beginning of the game and you find it, you know, tough and you're like, man, I can't progress any further until I get this done. You become frustrated and you quit. Right. Or you might quit. And so sliding this to the end just made a lot of sense to me. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, here's all the soul cores. Um, so there might be 36 there. I'm not going to count them, but I, I think there was like 36 or so. 
Uh, yeah, you should have gotten the soul. You, you should have the soul core trophy by now. Yeah, episode 34. But if you didn't, I made a list. And of course, you can go through and cross reference and then go find the one that you need. I think I even put links in the pinned comment as well. I, th I think I did. Um, if you support me on Patreon or you're a YouTube member, you actually get access to the workbook. This is the visual guide, but the workbook actually has a checklist. It's a, a Google spreadsheet document and you can go through and check them all off and cross reference. And of course that has links with all the timestamps too. So very easy to find the one that you're missing. Switch glaive map. Okay, here we go. Here's the nonsense. Well, no, not quite. <laughs> this is just the mystic art. This isn't bad. It's, it's coming up though. Yeah, so these are just mystic art trophies for all the different weapon types. This was not bad. We just had to farm up enough skill points to get there. Oh no, this was bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause we had, cause we didn't use any of these weapons throughout the run. <laughs> so yeah, this was the time consuming uh, part of this was farming enough skill points to unlock all that stuff. Yeah, that was brutal. Brutal man. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I think it was like a four and a half hour farm or something to get all that stuff taken care of. And then after that, Samurai of Legend completed all missions on any difficulty level does not include training missions. Uh, that was a given. We were doing all the missions anyway, pretty much. Um, well, I, I mean, I guess you could have skipped some missions if you're just playing the game casually. But for us needing this trophy, I knew we had to knock out all the missions and there was a ton of missions, man. And like I said, I did this junk eight times, bro. I had to play all these missions eight times, man. It was brutal getting this guy done, man. Um, friend of Guardians collected all Guardian spirits. I knew that would be okay for you guys to be able to do. Plus, you can replay the mission. So if you miss one, you can always go back to get it. But wasn't worried about that one. Dung Ball Roller. Um, I forget how to get. How do we get this trophy? Oh, you had to farm dung balls off of enemies. And I think I had, I, well, there's enemies in this mission you can farm for dung balls, but I think I found a different mission that we farmed and it was a little bit quicker. It was a lot quicker actually. So yeah, we had to farm. I think it was, um, how many 10 or maybe it was 30. It was a lot. Yeah, it was. I think it was more like 30 and you had to keep talking to this guy and giving him more dung balls. And then he kept giving you stuff, which is all here. And then boom, gave you the trophy. A lot of farming in this game. And there it is. Twilight Walker completed your first Twilight mission. I saved that to the very end because that's also random depending on which day you try to um, get this trophy. Like I got lucky and got a well, I guess in the screenshot. It was a recommended level 20 and it was just uh the violet cherry blossoms mission but you could get very tough missions like maybe it's a recommended level of 80 or 90 or something like that so i wanted to make sure that we were super over level so that no matter what you guys got you, you would have a, an easier experience plus i think i told you guys in the commentary that if you did get a hard recommended level just wait another 24 hours because i think these update every day or every few days the server updates and then eventually because it's all random you would get something that was extremely easy and you could get your trophy that way and then there it is guys 2036 slides later you are neo obtained all trophies that is the platinum so my experience with this game Again, it was the first Neo game I had played through. I didn't play Neo 1, but this game was brutal, not from the standpoint of like difficulty. It was jarring at first for me because you get the comparison between Dark Souls and this game. Uh, I don't think, I mean, there are some comparisons, obviously, but I think this is a, a breed of game, you know, in and of itself, because um, there's a lot of randomness to it that's not in a Dark Souls game. Um, I can tell you off the bat guys, I do, I didn't like this game. Uh, even if I were playing this game casually, I just didn't like it. I didn't like the, uh, 
I didn't like, look, okay, this is going to blow you guys' mind how detailed I am about the games I like and don't like. I look at things like fonts, uh, menus, um, colors, these type of things uh, create a very enjoyable experience for me or not. Take a game like Journey. The colors are beautiful in that game, right? It's a short game. I love Journey. It's it's easily one of my top 10 games of all times. You wouldn't think that, but it is. Ga games like Final Fantasy X, right? All the bright colors, right? The sound effects. That stuff goes a long way for me. This game had really, uh, I mean, I'll show you. It just had like very dingy colors. And I don't know, man. Some of the worlds were, I think I'll show you. I'll go back up here. Some of this... Um, I don't know, like it just had a, a, um, a color palette that I just did not like I'm trying to get to a certain mission. Because when I saw this mission, I was like, oh my God, like, I just don't like the art direction. See if I can find it quickly for you guys. Oh, here it is. This, I was like, this is ugly. It's horrible looking. And I think it was this mission where I was like, I don't think I'm going to like the game and then you got the font i didn't like the font i mean i get it but again I, I look at everything when it comes to game guys i've been playing a lot of games um i'm not 19 years old i've been around for a while i've played a bunch of games and i know what i want out of a game i know what i want to see with the menus i want i know what i want to see with the color palettes and i i just i wasn't impressed with with the art direction for this game the gameplay i didn't really like um I just, I don't know what to say. This was not a good game for me to cover or to play. Uh, of course I did it because it's my job. I'm, I'm here to make trophy guides. And you know, those of you that are supporting me on, I guess at the time I didn't have YouTube memberships, but you know, everybody who's supporting me over on Patreon had voted for this game. Um, I th well, actually I think at the time we weren't doing, can't remember if this game was voted in or not you guys can correct me in the comments we weren't running tournaments back then were we if you're a patron supporter let me know i can't i don't think we were though can't remember but either way you know patrons are donating money each month and they do that so i can make gods so i don't like quitting uh but i knew probably within the first six hours of playing this game that i was not going to like it at all and uh, I definitely wasn't going to like routing it and optimizing a guide, but I did it. It just took a very long time. And like I said, uh, those of you that got your platinum following my guide, you got your platinum one time. I did it eight times just to get the guide ready. So whatever you thought about the game, whether you liked it or not, um, you know, I had to I had to experience it eight times to get this rundown. But I'm glad I, I'm glad, you know, I'm glad it's on the channel. I can't say that I'm ever looking forward to Neo 1 hopping up and winning the tournament, but I'll of course cover it if that's what patrons vote for. Um, but I just didn't, I didn't find this game interesting at all, guys. I just didn't. Um, I played it simply because I had to make a guide for it. Otherwise, uh, I don't think I would have finished it past the first five or six hours. I just did not find it enjoyable at all. Um, I think Dark Souls is still a superior franchise, even though it has its weaknesses too. Um, if you're trying to make the comparison between the two, I think the Souls franchise wins hands down for me. Uh, but again, I'm glad it's on the channel. Uh, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. You know, this is my job. I don't necessarily have to like every game I play. Just like when you guys go into work, you may not like your job, but you still do it because that's how you earn money for yourself. That's how you make a living. So when it comes to making these guides, this is how I make my living. And uh, I'm willing to bite the bullet and play some games that I may not like so that I can help you guys get your trophies because maybe this is your favorite game of all time. And so you want to get a platinum in your favorite game of all time. And I'm here to assist you with that, whether I like the games or not. We all have uh, different opinions about games. Some of you guys might think Final Fantasy X sucks. It's it's easily one of my top 10 games of all time. That's just the nature of what we do as gamers, right? We can all have a different opinion and still be cool with each other at the end of the day, as long as we're mature about it. So I didn't like this game, but if you did, 
man i'm happy for you and i'm happy that you were able to follow the god and get your platinum and if you haven't followed the god yet it's on the channel the god still works nothing's been patched out or anything so if you would like to uh venture on over to the uh main channel and check out the playlist you will definitely get your platinum trophy by the time you get to the end of the series that has been my rtc rewind for neo 2 i hope you guys enjoyed see you in the next one be good